Hello, and welcome to Real Illusion Hints and Tips. Special Effects, Particles. Linking particles to characters and dummy objects. Spellcasting. Did you know that particles can be attached to pretty much anything in your scene, including your characters? It's true, and they can be assigned to any bone as well, right down to the fingertips. This is a powerful feature that can be used to quickly create awesome character and particle motion interaction. Using the Particle Modifier interface, you can edit the default particle settings and link the emitter to your character and dummy object. In this tutorial, we will link a Blaze default particle to a character and then also to a 3D block to use as a dummy object for animating and creating the illusion of throwing or casting the particle effect. These methods are achieved in 24 easy to follow steps. So let's go ahead and get started. Step number one. Open iClone and select an avatar you would like to use. In this case, I have chosen the mage character from the iClone Dungeon Quest content pack. So let's go ahead and get her now. Double click to put it in scene. And now you need to add a particle effect to the scene to be linked to our character. Go to special effects, particle, template, miscellaneous, and then locate and click on the blaze01 particle. Click play to review. As you can see, the particle effect is very large in the frame, and for this project, we need it to be smaller. Step number two. To resize the particle emitter, click on the Modify tab, and adjust the particle to the size that fits the effect you want to achieve. Scroll down, and locate the size portion of the menu under the Particle Setting section. Set the end width and height setting to a value of 50 each. Click play to review. This will edit the overall size of our particle. Step number three. Scroll down and locate the position section under the emitter setting portion of the menu. Set the up and down value to a value of zero. This will position your particle under your character at the absolute zero position. Click play to review. Step number four. To attach our blaze particle to our character, scroll up and find the link to section under the effect portion of the menu. Click the arrow and activate the rollout menu. Select character 0 and click play to review. Notice that your particle will be covered by your character. It's hidden due to the size for now. Step number 5. After selecting character 0 in the link to section, locate the link node button directly to the right of the menu. Click on Link Node. This will activate our Link to Subnode menu. Use the plus icons to fly out the menus until you find the body area you wish to attach to. In this tutorial, we'll be attaching to the right hand, although you can attach all the way down to the fingertips if you so wish. Select the right hand and click OK. Then, go ahead and click play to review. You will notice that our emitter is now attached to our right hand. Step number six. Now you need to add a motion to your character. This will display iClone's particle effects trailing abilities which can be customized, meaning when your character moves the arm with the particle attached, the emitter will leave a trail behind the motion. In this tutorial, we are using a Dungeon Quest motion. 
but any motion will work. Go to animation, motion, template, mage F, and then select WBRB03. As you can see, we now have the motion and the character moving with the emitter trailing behind the arm's movement. Step number seven. After reviewing, you will notice that your character animates and the particle reacts accordingly. Now we need to make sure the particle that is attached to our hand has an endpoint, so we can create the illusion that the particle is being cast from our avatar. Go to Special Effects, Particle, Modify, and then locate the Emitter setting portion of the menu, and uncheck Repeat, and then set the end frame to 100, so that our blaze particle ceases to emit at frame 100, where the dummy object will come in. As you can see, now our particle stops at frame 100. Step number eight. A dummy object is simply a 3D object that the emitter will be attached to. Then the dummy object will be animated to become that particle's controller. Any 3D block can be used for this purpose. So let's go to scene, props, template, 3D blocks, and select ball 001. Step number nine. You need to resize your dummy object so it doesn't take up so much of your project window. Go to modify and locate the adjust portion of the menu by scrolling up. Be sure to check the lock XYZ button and set the scale to a value of 30. This will resize your dummy object to the proper size. Step number 10. Open the timeline in the timeline section by clicking the timeline button. In the current frame menu, enter a value of 101. This will move. This is the frame where you want your dummy object animation to begin in relation to your character's motion. Step number 11. You need to place two keyframes, one for a starting position and one for an end position. Scroll up and under the adjust portion of the menu, under the move section, set the following coordinates. Left right to 25, up down to 175, and forward back to negative 180. These coordinates will position the dummy object at the character's fingertips only if you are using the stated Dungeon Quest motion. This will place your first keyframe automatically. Step number 12. A second particle is needed to achieve the separation or casting of the particle. This is a method where the first particle in the scene becomes invisible exactly one frame before the second particle is to become visible. This fools the audience into seeing one fluid motion appearing as only one continuous particle effect animation. You need to add a second Blaze on one particle to the scene. This one will be attached to our dummy object. Go to Special Effects, Particle, Template, Miscellaneous, and once again select a Blaze on one particle. Go ahead and scroll or scrub to review or click play. You can see our second particle in scene and our first particle still attached of course to our character's arm. And just like the first part of the tutorial we're going to need to resize this particle now. Step number 13. Go to modify, 
scroll up and under the particle setting portion of the menu find the size section and then set the end width and height to a value of 50 each this is to match the size of the particle that is already attached to our character this will edit the overall size of your particle making it smaller and you can go ahead and scrub or click play to review as you can see our particle has been resized now and it matches the size of our previous particle in scene step number fourteen go ahead and scroll down to find the position portion of the menu under the emitter setting section set the up and down value to zero this will place a particle in the absolute zero position step number fifteen scroll up and make sure that you have blaze o2 selected in the emitter portion of the menu and then find the link to section under the effect portion of the menu go ahead and click the arrow icon to activate the rollout menu and select ball double zero one this will attach your second blaze particle to your dummy object go ahead and click inside your timeline and scrub to review as you can see we have a particle attached to the dummy object you can just see the rim light there step number sixteen now we need to make sure that our dummy object particle has a start point so that we can create the illusion of the particle being cast from our avatar this particle start setting will be one frame higher than the character's particle in setting. Locate the emitter setting portion of the menu and then go ahead and uncheck repeat and set your start frame to 101 being one frame past your in setting for your previous particle and your in setting to whatever your project end is. In this case it's frame 600 for us. This is so that our second blaze particle begins at frame 101 and ends at frame 600. You can click inside your timeline and scrub or click play to review. As you can see now our particle starts at 101 after our keyframe here. Step 17. Now you need to animate your dummy object, creating the casting motion for your particle as it actually leaves your avatar's hand. giving the illusion of casting you need to place the second keyframe for the end position type a value of 600 in the current frame field which will move you to the end of the project go to scene props modify and under the adjust portion of the menu set the following coordinates left right 25 up down 175 and forward back negative 1580. This will place your second keyframe automatically. These coordinates will position the dummy object directly across the scene from the character's fingertips. Again, only if you are using the stated Dungeon Quest motion. If not, you can still use this method effectively you only need to figure out what your beginning and end position coordinates would be. Scrub or click play to review. As you can see our particle is attached to our dummy object and animates as our dummy object moves. Step number 18. Now to make our dummy object invisible so that only the particle attached to it can be seen by your audience. Scroll down and under the generate UV and map setting portion of the menu. In the opacity section, select the launch button. This will launch ball underscore double zero one's opacity map in your image editor. Step number 19. In Photoshop, you can easily change the default opacity file to solid black or invisible by using only one keystroke. 
use control plus I for invert. This will automatically set the opacity map to solid black or invisible, being that black is invisible, gray is semi-transparent in iClone, and white is completely visible. Then simply go to File, Save, and click OK when it gives you the JPEG options. Then return to iClone. Step number 20. Scroll down and locate the Update button at the bottom of the Modify menu. Click the Update button and notice that your new opacity map or invisible map has been applied to your dummy object, now making it invisible, only leaving your particle effect. Step 21. Now you need to save both of your custom particles for future use in editing. Go to Special Effects, Particle, Custom, then go ahead and move your timeline out of the way and select the Add button. Name your particle something that relates accordingly, like Dummy Object, Blaze 02 because it was our second particle in scene. Step 22. To activate your first particle that is attached to your character, go to Modify, scroll up, and under the Effect portion of the menu, locate the Emitter section. Click on the arrow to roll out the menu. Select Blaze01. Step number 23. Now you need to save Blaze01 custom particle for future use in editing. Go to Custom, and then select add. Name and save your particle once again and to keep things organized name it something like character blaze01. Step number 24. Now all you need to do is save your file. Go to project custom add and then name and save your file. Scrub for review. As you can see, you have your particle attached to your character's hand. That's visible from frame 1 to frame 100, and then turns invisible, and then we're creating the illusion of the particle actually leaving our mage's hand from frame 101 and traveling all the way across our screen. If you have any further questions, please feel free to contact Real Illusion technical support.